I want to get you thinking about the difference between the way that we work with information in the natural world and the way that we work with it when we're using computers. And I'm going to do that by giving you some very simple examples and asking some simple questions. First of all, when you go to a conference, we put your name around your neck. Why do we do that? Why do we choose to put it right there? When we come to an event like this tonight, we put this thing around my wrist. Why is it around my wrist? Next question. When we read a book, you take a bookmark and you put the bookmark into the book. Why do you stick it in the book or fold the page over? Why is the information in the book? Why don't you put it somewhere else? Um, and the third example is post-it notes. And post-it notes are something that I love. And uh, there's a lot of people that love post-it notes, obviously. And they have two fundamental properties, both of which are illustrated on this slide. And the first property, which is very important, is that post-it notes are blank. And so why are post-it notes blank? Seems like a trivial question, but they weren't always blank. That thing on the left is not blank. It's trying to be helpful. So the thing, yeah, my left. And this thing over here is blank, and it's more useful. Why is it more useful for it to be blank? Next question. Post-it notes are sticky. Why are they sticky? There's a reason. Would you buy post-it notes that weren't sticky? You can put them in places. You can put them into the future in some sense. You can put information where it belongs. So if you think about post-it notes, they're beautiful sort of uh, information storage architecture. Uh, they're asynchronous and they've got a wonderful user interface. Your children can understand them, your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents. Everyone understands post-it notes. And this is what we do as humans. We put information into the place that makes it most useful. Here's another example. We do it all the time. We don't even think about it because it's so common. But it's very important. People know how to work with data. We're very good. We make the world writable. There's a building. People are talking to each other. They don't know each other. They're using post-it notes to arrange to go out for a drink. We're really good at working with data. In fact, you can argue that evolution has made us really good at communicating and sending asynchronous, asynchronous signals to one another. That's what the dog is doing. It's leaving a message. Uh, it's asynchronous messaging. So we're really good at it. And uh, when you think about the computational world, uh, things are very, very different. Things are very awkward and rigid and so on. And th there's a lot of pain when you work with information in that world. And there's two main reasons for that. One of them is to do with permissions, which is that if you want to add something in the world, if you want to put a post-it note on something or other, you have to have permission. The world is not really writable. The computational world is not writable. You can't do the post-it note thing. And then the, the second problem is that you can't do things that weren't anticipated. So you get a guy like this, and even when you've got permission sometimes, it's not enough because the data's got structure. Someone had to, you know, a database designer or a programmer or someone like that decided what was going to be possible and what was not going to be possible. So you can't do unanticipated things like this. So as a result, we build things that look like that. It's a silo. We say, we've got our data, and we can't put it into the right place because it's not writable. So we'll put it in a silo, and we'll make an API. And you can get it through the API, but it's read-only. It's our data. Don't think about changing it. This is how we do open. That's a bulletin board with a glass case on it and a lock. There's an API. You can read the data, but you can't contribute. You can't do the post-it note thing. That's the way we do open today, and it's wrong because the world's not writable. So where's the solution? Uh, is Twitter? The solution is Twitter made of post-it notes, like this thing. Well, Twitter's close, because tweets are like, uh, they're like post-it notes in a way. But it's not the right answer. It's, it's good. It's really good. I like Twitter. Here's a tweet, in fact, which is very important, by a smart guy called Nova Spivak. He's basically saying, wouldn't it be a good idea if we could put post-it notes onto every tweet? People could put metadata onto tweets. Why can't we do that? OK, so here's the ad. Um, the thing that I'm building is a world of objects that don't have owners. Where you can walk up to any object, this is one for a book, and you can put tags and values on from They're basically like post-it notes, what page you're up to, the price, the title, uh, that you own it, and so on. And I claim that if you build an architecture where objects don't have owners, and you've got an object for everything, you can augment things, you can personalize things, you can filter things, you can search on the combinations of data, you can put information into places that makes it more valuable. And I think there's a chance that if you do that, you can do for the world of traditional databases something like what Wikipedia did for the world of encyclopedias. Thank you.